Hey everybody, welcome back for the last game in uh, Sam's Archon Tournament. Uh, his opponent this round is playing a deck called uh, C. Jokingly, Painter of the Hustling uh, Grid. Is that is that right? That is right, and that's that's a mouthful. Yeah. So uh, who's uh, who's piloting this deck? Well. Once again, it's me. So <laughs> <laughs> I just keep ending up on these recordings without even trying. And um, I'll say I'd rather be in the last game than the first game. So I was sitting pretty good here. I, I, me and Sam were both at sitting at 3-0. and um, I had a couple close games. Um, as you can see from, from the last video, Sam just kind of took control of that last one. Uh, so we'll see. I think this ends up being an interesting game. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's uh, oh. hop right in. Sounds good. <laughs> so just just to assure everybody who may be tuning into this, uh, the the St. Paul Minneapolis meta is not just like the five of us sitting around all playing each other. <laughs> Uh, we do routinely get between, I'd say, about 25 and, what would you say, 40, 50 I, people? I was going to say, I think we spiked out one sealed event at 56. Mm -hmm. So, and we, I mean, the I think the smallest we've had is 21. So, we get a lot of people. It's it's not just, just the three of us sitting around playing games and recording them. <laughs> Yeah, it just so happens that uh, when you've got three people who've been in since the beginning, uh, there's a pretty good chance that uh, they're going to be playing each other quite a bit. Yeah, and l luckily this time we didn't get paired up first. So, like I said, that's, uh, that's really just a, a phenomenon on how I don't know how it happens, how it seems like whenever I show up, or every other time I show up, it, uh, it's me and Chase, first round. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've definitely noticed that has been happening to me uh, more and more, is my first round. Uh, I will typically play someone uh, that I was not expecting to play first round. I was expecting to play in the third or fourth round after I've got, you know, two or three wins under my belt. Um, and it's, uh, it, it, uh, definitely is a, a bit of a kick in the pants and, uh, kind of makes me work for it right off the bat. Well, and that's, that's one of the, the kind of the, the sad things about running into a good player first round is that if two good players run into each other in the first round, well, now, you know, somebody, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. That's just kind of how the game works, right? Mm -hmm. So, right off the bat, someone's either got to start digging themselves out from the bottom, um, or you end up trying to keep it on the top. So, uh, yeah, that happened to me uh, yesterday, um, and I think you and Sam are going to cast those games uh, sometime next week. And I got paired up against uh, Vin uh, in the first round, and. Uh, it did not go well for me. He ended up taking first place. Um, but I was able to... Uh, I was able to recover. I don't want to spoil too much. Well, that, that's always good when you can do that. Yeah. yeah and there's Sam manipulating his Sanctum board and establishing it nice and early. You know, I think instead of uh, critiquing Sam on on the or talking about the the good things he does, I think we just need to talk about the things that just you know are mild annoyances at this point. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I I believe if I remember correctly, there's a big play I let him take back. So, oh. Yep. Oh, you're a nicer person than I am. Yep. There we go. See, I brought out a Nimquid, trying to to clear some of his sanctum board out. Great use and... of Numquid. I don't know if I would have used terms this early with uh, just with knowing how well Sam's deck deals with Ember Generation. 
and, and you know, I just kind of was getting the amber, wanted to clear my hand, try to get something that may uh, end up with something that mm-hmm. that got me a little bit more mileage. Um, and it is, okay. and we should note that uh, in this deck you do have a Fagin and three urchins, correct? Yes, yes. This is this is my my Fagin deck. It is um, a Sanctum Shadows uh, Untamed. Giant Sloth, Ancient Bear, Mermook, Nature's Call. Interesting choice to send Magda back. But, you know, that makes sense because her keyword text says leaves play, not destroyed. Yes. And and here I actually made, I think I made a big mistake. And I've played this deck multiple times since then. And Sam's bringing it up right now. Is that um, I should have brought Nimquid back to my hand. Yeah. I, I think that's uh, that's an accurate statement. You could have brought a tool back to your hand. Yeah, and he just he just clears it right off the board. And I'll tell you the Sam throwing down that stun onto Giant Sloth. Uh, apparently, I'm talking about it on here, but uh, it's it's a very strong move that I don't think a lot of people realize with uh, Giant Sloth. Mm-hmm. Is that if you stun him, in order for you to pull that stun off, you still have to discard a card to use him. Absolutely. Because his his text says, in order to use, you have to discard a card, a, an untamed card. Yeah. So. Yeah. So at this point, uh, you know, before you can even uh, use that giant sloth, you're going to be down two cards. Yeah. Unless, unless you can return it to your hand, uh, which I'm not seeing. You only have the one lost in the woods. Uh. Or... I mean, there was a nature's call where I could shuffle it back in. Yeah. I'm sorry, we got those reversed. Nature's Call bounces it to your hand, lost in the woods, to send it to your deck. Yeah, to shuffle it. Yep. So, I already know that it's kind of kind of just sitting there dead weight. I just pawn sacrifice it. Yeah. Yep, I think that's what I would have done as well. It's, uh, if it's not going to do me any good, uh, you might as well use it for something. Exactly. And, and, uh, I do usually can can go through this deck at least once during a game, so I was hoping that maybe it would come out again later, possibly. Yeah, you uh, you're off to a very strong start. You know, five ember, two creatures. You've uh, you've made Sam's creatures more expensive. Um, you know, he does kind of have you on uh, on a little bit uh, on a little bit of a not not a lock, but. Uh, definitely making you work for it uh, just by yeah. keeping those two creatures stunned and now killing the Mermook. Popping the Screech Bomb to make you lose two. And see, and I'm not quite sure why he used the Screech Bomb there because I was only sitting at five. So, I mean, maybe just wait and hold on to that. Not, not you know, use it quite right, at, right at that moment, but. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I have been toying around with the idea of when to use my bumpsies and screech bombs and burn the stockpiles, uh, things that just flat out make your opponent lose Ember, uh, and I have come to the conclusion that if I know for a fact that my opponent's deck is not bursty, you know, it 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 can't go from zero to ten ember in one turn Mm -hmm. um then i typically like to hold those cards until they are in the five or six range uh so i can knock them back down um and really just get the most use out of them as i possibly can uh if my opponent is is playing a deck you know just a hardcore racing deck that will just do nothing but generate ember as fast as possible uh, then I will just try to continuously keep their ember count as low as possible, knowing full well that I may have to deal with that situation all over again the next turn. 
Yeah, that's that's a good way to to look at it. Because I mean, I'll tell you, this this deck isn't necessarily. I wouldn't really consider it a race race deck, but it, it definitely can get bursty um, at times. And see, and, and now Sam has uh, set the Mag of the Rat that I jumped to his hand back beside Shadow Self to make it that much more or that much harder to get rid of. Get my two Amber back. Yeah. I think Sam has a slight advantage here. Uh, you know, just because he has a th five creatures out on the board, uh, but they're split between two houses, so he's going to be able to uh, realize their use a lot more. Yeah, and there he's starting to clear out my board. He definitely wants board control in this, and then with this deck, it's it's one of the things that definitely is is a must. Um, and he just ramped up his amber. I'm sitting at two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an all right full moon. Yeah, it's it's definitely it definitely can get better in this deck. It was one of those situations where I'm, I I can see I'm kind of running behind. I got to do something, and he's he he definitely put the pressure on me in in this in this uh, game. Yeah. Sam getting his first key. You know, and I, I don't know if we noticed it during the game, but I'm pretty sure that Shadow Self should have one damage from when the Dodger fought the Urchin uh, the second time. Uh, so that would be a mistake by Sam. Uh, this, I believe, is his first mistake. <laughs> uh, and I think that's probably his third beer, so... You, you know, actually, I'm pretty sure that uh, this round, he or this this night, he was in four deep at this point because he <laughs> had that first the first round by and being a little nervous being on camera at first, and he's like, yeah, I'm just going to keep drinking some beer. <laughs> uh, we all have our our quirks. I personally <laughs> like to, to drink coffee because yep. I like I like to be able to, you know, think clearly. Some people think a little bit more clearly under the influence of alcohol. It's all right. Yeah, I, th I think I'm actually on my third beer in this game, so it's... And really what happened was is that I bought the first beer thinking it was something different because it was the rotator they have, and ah. it was pretty awful, so I drank it really fast <laughs> and then bought two more. <laughs> Just to get the taste out of your mouth. Exactly. Yeah, I understand. Looks like... He's trying to focus down your bear. Interesting choice. I am curious as to why he's not going after your Dew Fairy. Um, yeah, you know, I, I would go after... Probably the Dew Fairy, because you can... Throw Magda at it, get rid of the elusive, and use your Dodger. But I mean, Halicor is a good good option as well mm -hmm. with the with the Dodger. But he would have been able to keep the the Shadow Self out for a turn longer, and possibly do the same thing to Halicor later. Uh, nope, I think we see the reason right there. Uh, in his hand, he has a Pawn Sacrifice. Playing the Miasma just for the Ember. Giving you two. There he goes, continuing to dismantle your board. Bullet Eye continues to come out. Does, but he makes a mistake with Bullet Eye, and it's it's going to come out pretty quickly. Uh, 
So what's going through your head at this point? I, at this point, I, I know I need to... Well, he... I know he got rid of one of his miasmas, which is great, right? So I, I know I need to try to get back on the board because my board presence really does matter in this deck. Um, and there we go. And uh, so this way, yeah, the special delivery is sitting on the table. And he left it on the flank, and I'm like, yep, that's gone. Great. It's going to be gone forever, so I don't have to deal with it. So That's a great use of a special delivery. You get around the elusive, you take out a creature that you never want to see on the table. Solid play. Two kind of remials. Yeah, and unfortunately I don't have any of my other boards built up yet. Uh -huh. um, but I, I will say that um, with this deck, if I can get my Remiels out and protected, and then be able to also somewhat protect some of my other creatures I want to use, it can go very badly for somebody. Because I, I can use my... What I like to do is I like to use my Remiels to actually activate Fagin and bring back my Urchins for a later steal, so... Man, there's a lot yeah. of mistakes going on here. Yeah, yeah, I think the beer definitely is is affecting him slightly. <laughs> I'm straining his cards for him. Uh, my Steam notifications popping up. Please disregard them. <laughs> yeah, seeing if I had gotten one of my NFLs in my hand earlier, one turn earlier, those those uh. The, those Remuels would have been protected by that NFL. Yeah. So that uh, Reaping with Protectrix puts you on check, I believe. Yes. So then who did you target with the Protectrix's ability, Sequis? Sequist. That way I was able to fight with Sequist, throw a little bit of damage onto um, Tabris, because I've played Sam with many decks with him and Tabris, and he loves Tabris so much that I, I know it's going to see action. Mm -hmm. So he needs to get off the board. Mm -hmm. And I am sitting at six over there. <laughs> 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 All right, Sam. <laughs> Three beer max. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we need to make sure we cut him off. <laughs> well, as long as he's not playing me, sure. <laughs> if he's playing me, I'm buying. Well, see, and here's the worst part is that he's he's making these little mistakes. But he doesn't make any massive mistakes to that where I can be like, oh, well, I'm just going to take advantage of this completely. Mm -hmm. I mean, besides the bullet eye, he hasn't made any, any mistakes that I can't capitalize on. I agree. He's made small, very small placement errors. Uh, and aside from the uh, one mistake he made earlier in not recognizing that you had uh, two Remiels out on the board... Uh, he, uh, now this is a very interesting play. I, uh, does this ultimately come back to bite you in the butt, or is this something that you are fully able to, uh, capitalize on? It's, I, I don't quite remember. This, like I said, this, this is one of those cards that I have a big issue playing uh, especially when I know I'm playing against a deck like Sam's, who's got a lot of creatures, and he wants to use them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like there's certain situations I like to bring my speed sigil out. This situation where I had Fagin in hand, that way I know I can use him right away before he gets an opportunity to snipe him out somehow. Um, is is probably you know the best way to do things. Um, but well, I guess we'll just kind of keep seeing if if I made a mistake bringing that speed sigil out. 
but I, I'd say out of out of probably 75 percent, maybe more, maybe closer to 90. I do not. I just ditch it in the discard. Yeah, that's uh, that's typically what I will see happen with a speed sigil. Looks like Sam just played a charge. <laughs> Does he have the cards in hand to capitalize on it and get rid of that Fagin? Interesting. Very interesting. Yep. Not quite trading a staunch knight. I think the staunch knight is going to have. Uh, Should have two left, I think. Yep, four or... damage on it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, smart, smart move. Having Tabris fight Fagin. Yep, you know, get that, you know, knock that elusive off, and still get the capture one. So, yep. taking care of Fagin with Dodger, stealing one. You did manage to get some good use out of it, though. Yeah, so so currently. He got me from nine to seven, to seven. While he himself is sitting at seven as well. Yep, and and I am a key behind. So not quite sure what his what his thought here is if he's going to try to trade some creatures out, or just reap for some more. Interesting choice. Very interesting that he uh, is just throwing. Interesting that he's throwing guys at your shadow creatures. Uh, it looks like he's trying to minimize the amount of use that you're going to be able to get out of shadows in, in the future. Um, when it's pretty clear that you're gonna play a bait and switch. <laughs> there he even said it. He said, you're gonna bait and switch me, and <laughs> there sure it enough. Is. Uh, and see, and, and, like, and, and that we keep talking about bait and switch, because bait and switch is such a a card that, that is, is very... What's the word I'm looking for? Help me out here. Swing it's, um... Me. Yeah, let's say we went from I had no keys to seven. Now we're sitting at I have a key, he's got a key, and now I'm I'm up on check on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are definitely starting to take control of this game again. Sam unfortunately still has board presence. Yes. Yeah, let's see and. Here we are. We're sitting at one key apiece, and I am I am shuffling my deck. Like I said, I I do tend to go through this deck at least once when I play. Yeah. Yeah, I was very impressed with the speed at which you were able to get through the entire deck. And it looks like Sam's sitting at at a reshuffle himself too. So. <laughs> That's a great time for a routine job. It couldn't have come out any better time. I mean, it had it come out, you know, had he just drawn one more card and had to reshuffle, it would only stolen that one instead of the, the, the full two that he's got because he has two routine jobs in here. Yeah. And Speed Central is another one of those cards where... It's a persistent effect for both players, and 
we all seem to forget it every now and then. Oh, I never forget that one. <laughs> uh, in uh, in the deck that I am uh, currently playing, trying to just grind out power levels, uh, I love seeing a speed sigil hit the table. Uh, it allows me to utilize my grenade snibs a lot faster. Um, yep. And, uh, and uh, just... Well, and that's got... I mean, that's got how many creatures in it? 20? Uh, that Pretty one... Pretty close to it? Um, I think it has 17 or 18 creatures. Okay. Still, I mean, a good, a good chunk of creatures, and... I'll tell you, playing against you, I usually would throw that away. And even playing against Sam in this deck, I would usually throw it away. Uh, the whole thing was, I wanted to get use of my Fagin right off the bat. Because had I not, I knew he was going to figure out a way to get around it, and get, get rid of it with what he had going. Yeah... So far, it looks like he's been able to get two Ember off of that speed sigil. And see, and here we are. We swung swung back the other way. Now Sam's sitting at seven. I'm sitting at three. Just yeah. like that. Yeah, and he is absolutely in the stronger position. Uh, he can go Brobnar and uh, just capitalize on those two gauntlets in the war chest. Um, yep. He's got the Dodger out there so he can keep you down on Ember by uh, just running it into the Urchin. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> no. It is not looking good for you, sir. <laughs> well, it's... Here we go. Full Moon's what I, what I need to see. Let's see if we can burst up a little bit. Getting just three off that one. Uh, Dust Pixie that came out. There's another. Yeah, this is uh, this has absolutely been a great game so far. Uh, there's been a lot of back and forth, a, uh, a huge amount of uh, Ember swing, um, just in, you know, who's got what, who's doing what, who can can keep the pressure on. Uh, on their opponent harder, I guess, uh, just by running their ember total up as much as possible. Sam has to keep in the keep in mind uh, that uh, you've shuffled your deck and you now have access to that bait and switch again. I'm going to be interested to see if that uh, if that affects his play at all. Yep. I was going to say, and I knew I couldn't do anything to get him off that second key, so I figured I would run my Amber up so he he can. It'd be harder for him to get me off my second key. <laughs> and then we'd be sitting pretty pretty close to even. Yeah, I think you're in a very strong position here, uh, just as far as Ember is concerned. Um, not so much as far as Board is concerned. Yeah, the board is definitely, and it's definitely a, a big concern for me that his board is just um, still, you know, out, you know, he's got me out, man, two to one on a regular basis, and he can just do so much with it, especially with those gall and commands, especially with that Remiel, Remiel sitting out there. Yeah, he's got. Cause, I mean, he could go Brobnar, right? Mm -hmm. But he could use his smashes. He can then use a Gauntlet Command to use his Remiel, go into Shadows, use his Shadow Self, use another Gauntlet Command for another um, uh, another one of his creatures. And, and even uh, there's that Dodger there that I forgot about. Well, so the, the Gauntlet of Command only allows them to ready and ah, fight. Yes, yes, uh, you are correct. If this were the Dominator Bobble, that would be even worse. Yes. This is going to be interesting to see who he picks to throw at the Protectrix. If I were him, I would probably ready and uh, fight with either a Dodger or that Valder just to keep him on the board. Oh, killing Shadow Self. Yeah. Great play. 
half. So now he's cleared my board and he's sitting pretty. Yep. Sam using the do as much as you can principle to ready his own smash to reap with it. Turning on the war chest for another two damage. Yep. Yeah. I say so. He's sitting now. He's got a second key. I'm able to forge my second key. He's sitting at six, Amber. I'm sitting at five. Super close. Yeah. So, in this situation, you play Blinding Light, what would you be um, stunning? Boy, this is a tough call. Uh, I think... I think I would probably call Brobnar, uh, simply yep. because those are the creatures that are uh, undamaged. Um, okay. Those are the ones that I uh, that you typically want to see used for fighting, um, but he can go into uh, he can go into other houses off of Brabnar with those gauntlets. Um, it's true. So I think uh, I think you can't go wrong with either Brabnar or Sanctum. I think both would have been uh, been a valid choice. Sam removing the stuns. Oh, he's I got a doorstep in his yep, hand. Yep, I saw the doorstep. <laughs> Sam's just so used to playing with that armor. He's like, oh, I've got armor, right? Yeah. You are both on your third key. Interesting choice for him to play Terms of Redress before it... Uh, are we sure that he had the uh, doorstep in hand? It may not have been. It may have been, it may have been the Ezekiel. It, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think it was the Ezekiel. Um... Because it wouldn't make sense for him to uh, play Terms of Redress before Doorstep. You should have four. If the plan works, there's 12 Amber Ha! How there you go. He did the bait and switch math in his head to where <laughs> we'd both be sitting at six if I bait and switched him currently. I don't think you're going to need it because I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go Shadows. All right, what's going to happen? Dodger comes out. Yeah, this is uh, let's say it's not looking good. No. <laughs> and I was one short, one steal short of getting him off that last key, sitting on eight amber. And I, I was debating on, on going at, at one point to go. Um, <laughs> ah. I was planning on go, going uh, right to. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I two, forgot about that. You oh, okay. had two answers in the top two cards. Yeah, next two cards I needed. So yeah, I was, I was debating on clearing out his board, but I needed to try to get him off as much amber as possible. I still wasn't able to do it. It was super close. Uh, one more amber steel from me, and I could have had it, um, but them's the bricks. Yeah. So, Sam went four and zero. I think he ended up in second place. Um, I went three and one, and I think I ended up in sixth. So it's good showing. Yeah. Uh, both of us being chain bound. Both of us grabbed some chains on this one. I grabbed three chains on my deck, and uh, Sam has uh, four. So yeah, nothing wrong with that. And uh, and those are the kind of games that I you know I absolutely love you know it's the 
the really close games where you guys are just neck and neck. You're trading back and forth. You you are just fighting it out. You're duking it out. You're you're stealing. You're trading. You're capturing. And ultimately, at the end, it's uh, you know you you're both going to be sitting on six plus ember on the third key, and it's just a matter of who can either cheat that key out first or generate more ember than their opponent can control. Yep, um, and and this time it came down to Sam doing that just slightly better. Um, but I'll tell you what, I, I love playing games that are one amber difference. It's like the one amber swing one way or another, um, you know, chooses victory. It, it's great when you when you get games like that. So, Yeah, those, those are the games that uh, you really feel like, um, you know, you, you just, you either left it all out on the line or you made one mistake and you have learned to not do to not make that mistake again yep and i say and, and i'd rather lose a game like this where it came down to one amber back and forth the entire time than stop somebody in a complete blowout with you know three of what three keys to none mm -hmm. so i'd rather play the, the the games where i lose so close rather than just completely wipe my, my opponent off the board yeah agreed I think that was another another good round of games. And uh, what else we got? Uh, that was it. So, okay, guys, thank you so much for uh, uh, sticking around, giving it a watch. Uh, if you like it, subscribe. If you don't like it, uh, tell people you don't like to subscribe. Um, <laughs> and uh... <laughs> that's a good answer right there. <laughs> I just don't like to subscribe to stuff. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and on that note, uh, we're going to take off. We will see you guys next week. And uh, like I said, it's going to be Sam and Andy casting a series of four games that I played uh, last Friday, which was March 22nd. So we'll see you then. Take care. All right. Take it easy.